Hello and welcome to another episode of Optics 3 Debates. Here we answer the most frequently received questions that we uh, get over email or that we uh, come across in our YouTube section. My name is Andras. My name is Theodor. And today we're going to be talking uh, about two very, very common terms that, uh, that in, we come across when talking about optics and that is fixed and variable magnification. And what is the easiest way to explain fixed and variable magnification? Well, Andras, this is the, it doesn't get any more basic than this. But we still, we have a wide array of different customers. And some customers are those who are beginners, who are uh, meeting themselves for the first time with optics. And it is, I think, the right way that we explain uh, such basic things as fixed and variable magnification also in these debates. So the basic difference is that with a fixed magnification, like with this scope, you only have one magnification. That means eight in this instance or six or four, it doesn't matter, you're not able to change it. That means that when you're looking through it, it uh, magnifies the image for eight times and that's it. You're not able to change it in any way. With variable magnification, you're able to pick which magnification you would like to use. So either like on this scope, it goes from uh, 2.3 magnification all the way to 18. That means that you have a zoom, in this case, eight times zoom, and you can see the basic image in, let's say, two times magnified, and then you zoom in to 18 time magnification. That means that you, you zoom in the, the picture to see better details and so on. So the field of view changes, the image itself changes a little bit, so it becomes a little bit dimmer on high magnifications, and everything changes with this magnification change. Uh, with binoculars, it's the same. With fixed power binoculars like this one, uh, 10 by 42, you have a fixed 10 time magnification and all the objects you're observing are magnified for 10 times. While with a variable magnification binoculars, you can, uh, you can zoom in or you can change the magnification, let's say in this, in this case from 8 all the way to 24. That's quite rare on binoculars to have a variable magnification, right? If we are, it's, it's really funny because it's two different worlds. With the rifle scopes, the fixed magnification rifle scopes, they are dying out. Yeah, I think that there are only a couple of producers still in the world that produce fixed magnification rifle scopes. Everybody else already switched to the variable magnification. With binoculars, uh, binoculars, it's the other way around. It is the majority of all binoculars are fixed magnification and only a couple of them, only a few of them are variable magnification. If we look at the premium producers, so those who are producing the most high quality uh, optical products in this sport optic segments. It's even more abstract because only Leica produces uh, variable magnification binoculars, no one else. Size doesn't produce them, the Swarovski doesn't produce them, uh, Kales doesn't produce them and so on, Steiner, nobody else from the premium producers. While with, uh, with rifloscopes it's the other way around. From the premium producers only Schmidt and Bender and Doctor are still producing the fixed. Everybody else produces only variable. So it's completely opposite if you look at the rifloscopes or if you look at the binoculars. This brings me to another question, which is um, what are the advantages of both fixed uh, magnification mm -hmm. rifloscopes and binoculars and what are the advantages of variable magnification scopes? Well, with a fixed magnification, you have the advantage that uh, the construction is much lighter simpler, easier to produce and uh, smaller. So in essence, it's also easier to, to produce a really high quality image with a fixed magnification optics. This is the reason why all the binoculars where, where the image quality is the most important factor are almost all of them are fixed magnification. And this is also the reason why only Leica from the top premium producers uh, is producing the variable binoculars because it's so hard to make a high quality variable optics. Um, so this is the advantage of, of, a, of a fixed. Low weight, high quality optics, uh, higher light transmission rate 
because there is less glass elements inside and there is less of transition of the light from uh, air to, to glass and so on. It goes through uh, smaller number of uh, air to glass surfaces. Um, so this is the advantage. The advantage of the variable is that you can use it in more versatile situations. You can either use it a scope like this on, on, a, on a close range with a wide angle uh, image on a low magnification uh, or to, to shoot it from uh, freehand because uh, without any uh, support because of low magnification this is possible and then at the same time you can put it let's say up to 8 then it's perfect for low light use because the, you, you get the 7 millimeter exit pupil which is optimal for low light use and then you can go further let's say to 18 and you can use it for long range or to observe all the small details on, a, on, an, on an image. Uh, it depends if you look at the animals or something else. So the variable magnification has a lot of advantages because you can choose at which magnification you will use the scope. So you have a uh, one single scope can be used for many different situations and can feature many different uh, parameters because of the variable magnification. The downside is that it is if you, if you want to have the optical quality on the same level as with fixed uh, power uh, optics, the price will be much higher and it's going to be much harder to produce it. It's going to be a little bit bigger, it's going to be heavier, it's going to have more glass elements in its uh, construction. So in short, uh, with fixed variable, with fixed magnification scopes, the optical quality is a little bit better. But uh, if we look at the variable magnification, magnification scopes, you have to purchase one for pre premium class to, to get, get the, the same, same optical quality. It, it's, if you want to have the same optical quality, it costs more in a variable. Yes. But with a variable, you get an optics which is far more versatile and can be used in many different situations. While with a fixed magnification scope, you get a similar level of quality at a lower price, but you are limited to one use only. Let's say with this 8 by 56 this is a low light scope. It's really hard to, to use it for long range, almost impossible. It's really hard to use it for close range because the uh, field of view is narrow. With a, with a variable scope you can do all of this, but to have the same level of quality you will pay more, it will weight more, it will be heavier, it is going to be a little bit bigger. With binoculars it's quite simple. At the current state of the matter always use the fixed power uh, binoculars because they just offer better optics uh, for lower price and uh, you get more for your money. You answered the most frequently question, uh, asked questions that we receive on our emails. Uh, thank you for uh, watching this uh, episode of Optics Trade Debates. If you have any additional questions that we perhaps forgot to answer, uh, send us an email or leave a comment in the comment section below and if you think that the video was helpful uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and goodbye. Goodbye.